Before I actually start off with my review of Riders, I actually want to give you guys a little trivia, or a little did you know. This is how I found out about Shadow the Hedgehog. Shadow the Hedgehog was advertised on the back of this manual, and that's what actually convinced me to buy Shadow the Hedgehog at GameStop. I didn't actually get Shadow around the time where it came out, but th I got Sonic Riders around the time where it came out. I was playing the crap out of this in Spring Break 06. I remember that. But, let's get on with the review. The game was released in 2006. 2006 is an infamous year of Sonic games, not just for Sonic 06, but for the Genesis port on the Game Boy Advance. But, it's a racing game. And you know how Sonic and racing goes reputation wise you've heard of sonic drip before i'm sure but as you could see in the starting you could see the game's concept looks pretty damn good i mean f fairly good you're on a hoverboard so i was curious to see how this game would work when i was a kid and let's get on now you could see that there's a whole bunch of options, like extras, audio room, and everything. But, let me just move on to the story. The story is that they're looking for a Chaos Emerald. You know, the trio of Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles. But then, you see the, the Babylon Rogues, who are featured throughout the entire story. And Tails informs Sonic that that's where the Emerald is. They have the Chaos Emerald. So, Sonic chases after the rogues. And for some reason, they're faster than Sonic when they have their hoverboard on. But, it's... I like the cutscene, considering it was a PS2 game. It, it actually looks pretty good. And as you see... The battle goes on. Sonic is still determined and he gets a hoverboard. And chases after them. Which is basically how the plot goes. But, but what convinces them to enter the tournament is that... Dr. Eggman tells them that he's opening a contest. The only cost is one Chaos Emerald. So Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles enter it, wondering what, uh, what Dr. Eggman's up to. And that's basically how the plot mainly goes. Now, as you can see, there's a normal mode, story mode, tag mode, survival mode, and shop. Normal race is just this basic race without story. Story mode is just how the story goes. Tag mode is where you could partner with your tag part with, with like, a, a second controller and race. And survival mode is where it's actually a battle-based thing. And there's a shop where you could purchase new, uh, you know, items. And you could also upgrade stuff, too. And as you can see, with the player selection in free mode... This has elements, like in Sonic Heroes, speed, power, and fly, which are actually, they have, they all have their different things. Obviously, speed is based on speed. They both have their different, um, stars, so they have different abilities, and they could choose different paths. But, here's where the gameplay goes in. The actual racetracks look pretty good in my opinion, but the controls could be a little bit improved when I took a look at it. And this is one of the racing games that actually have fuel in it. You could also do stunts. But, 
you basically have to go on, you have to follow the air or whatever to basically sp speed fast enough. But you can collect power ups that are kind not like Mario Kart because they're not cheap and unfair. But they're basically like you know you could go a little bit faster than you usually do, and you can collect rings, which is good. Nothing is serious and you know child based as um, Mario Kart. This game does have drifting, and you have to certain the you have to put the analog stick in a certain place in order for it to go well. But this game's mainly featured around stunts, like that's the main way you go extremely extremely fast. Sure, there are a lot of other ways, but I find that that is the main way to go fast. Pulling off stunts. So, let's see. What are my overall thoughts on Sonic Riders? Sonic Riders is a great concept. It does have a, a couple of flaws, though. Such as the controls could be better. The fuel thing is a little bit unnecessary. But I like, this, I like the concept. It's a very unique, original concept. So I have to give this game... A B. A flat out B. It could be improved on a lot of bases, but I think it's overall a solid racer. Much better than Sonic Drift. Which is, it's pretty easy to make a better racer than Sonic Drift, but you know what I mean. Thanks for watching. Now, it's time to move on to Zero Gravity. This game was released in 2007, a year before the first Sonic Riders. It was released on the PlayStation 2 as well as the Wii. The PlayStation 2 version was never released in Japan. The game's story follows the same characters from the last game and follows the same story format. However, Sonic and friends are strangely in the future and robots are out to destroy a city and they must be stopped. Instead of the Hover Wars being introduced due to a racing tournament set up by Eggman, the Hover Wars are implemented to escape the robots or beat a time limit to rescue friends. Team Heroes and Team Battle on each have their own story and eventually overlap each other. The gameplay is the key difference in this game rather than the story. There is no more fuel in this game. The drifting system is also where the title of the game comes from. While prompted to drift, Sonic stays in midair and then boosts to go faster. The controls could be slippery at times when it comes to drifting. Since fuel is no longer necessary, the rings are now used to perform stunts and to go faster. So, what are my overall thoughts on Sonic Rider Zero Gravity? Well, due to its major similarities between this game and its prequel, my review score will be similar. However, I did find the controls to be slippery in comparison to Sonic Riders, so I must give this game a B.